The road to the national championship leads through central New York, the historic JMA Wireless Dome. Our backdrop as we head inside, a confident number seven seed, James Madison, looking to steal a second on the road today as they try to make their way to North Carolina. But first, they have to defeat the number two seed, led by M Award and Tawaritan finalist, Megan Tyrell of Syracuse. Take a look at our bracket. Syracuse JMU winner will take on the 2.30 matchup between Boston College and Notre Dame, Denver and North Carolina, and the top seed Northwestern and Loyola will round out the day. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Leah Sicando alongside Charlotte North. And Charlotte, as we look at this matchup today, two teams just dying to get to that national championship game, but the, their roads and their missions are certainly a little bit different. Excited to kick off this exciting day of lacrosse here with this matchup. And JMU, back in 2018, they achieved ultimate success, but they're looking to get back to their first championship weekend since then. And Syracuse University, they were a mainstay at Final Four weekend, but they missed it last year getting out in that quarterfinal round. They're looking to punch their ticket today. And a big reason why they would do that is because of their potent offense, which is led by Tawaratan finalist Megan Tyrell. Tyrell, to me, is the dual threat quarterback of the group. You want to play her as a feeder? She'll beat you right off the dot. She'll take you behind and she'll shake you. And then there's Megan Cardi. She is the sharpshooter of the group. She's got a rangy, right-handed shot in a number of ways she'll beat you. And then there's Emma Ward, who has elevated her game and she'll pick you apart behind edX with her vision. Emma Tyrell's got firecracker feet. She is one of the best Dodgers on this team. She can go right and left and she'll shake you off ball as well. And not only do they have one of the most talented offenses, but in cage on the defensive end, Delaney Schweitzer, ACC Goalkeeper of the Year. She has stood tall all season long. Look for her to have a big day today. Well, Schweitzer's gonna face up against another Tawaritan finalist for JMU, Isabella Peterson. What makes Peterson so good? Peterson has been so impressive all year. She's tall, she's strong, but to me, What's impressed me the most is her ability to dodge from anywhere. She'll take you behind. She started her career as a crease attacker, but now she's become more of a downhill dodger. She loves that right to left split down the alley, and she is one of the most efficient shooters right now in the NCAA. Well, Syracuse is gonna have to try to work through the zone of JMU, and that is certainly anchored by Mirai Durkin. Durkin is one of these veteran leaders of this staple defense for JMU and look to them to get to the hands right away of this potent Syracuse offense. 10 hours of lacrosse coverage this afternoon on ESPNU and it's all women's action all day long. We're ready for the draw. Peterson and Adamson for Syracuse. So glad you could join us. And the draw scooped up by the orange and Tyrell. Working from X. Here's Emma Ward now scanning it out. Cockrell. Sierra with a little bit of space. Things are closing in for JMU. They get the foul called. Durkin on the foul. Great ball movement there by the Syracuse offense. If they're able to draw those shooting space calls throughout the game, I think they'll be able to find opportunities on the eight meter and bury them. Kate Buchanan in goal for JMU. She has been absolutely stellar. Buchanan came up big in that last matchup with Maryland, had a clutch save in the final minutes to, to seal the deal there for the JMU Dukes. Quick movement inside, Carney lets one go. And it will go back as it's taken away there by Buchanan. Cat faced a career high 29 shots against Maryland in the victory. Patiently working it in. Getting some numbers in on their attack are the Dukes. 
Syracuse zone defense is a little bit different than that JMU zone, right? The JMU zone is more of a hybrid zone, disguised, looks like a man-to-man -man up top. This Syracuse zone is a true zone. They'll pressure out and they'll back the ball. And for this JMU offense, they've got to be patient. They've got to work this zone. They've got to let the ball fly through all four quarters, but stay attacking off the catch. Trying to work some one-on-one -on -one isolation, and the Dukes get on the board first. Taylor Marchetti getting the crowd to its feet. What a save here by Cat Buchanan. That gives this Dukes team momentum and transition. And again, this offense, as they are patient, if Marchetti can work the backside of this zone and dodge on an unsettled situation, they're gonna have a lot of success. So again, that high ball movement will turn into these dodging opportunities. And what a job there by Marchetti finishing on the inside. 23rd of the season for Taylor Marchetti. Just setting her up a little bit of an isolation, 1v1 situation. Okay, now the butterflies are out for both sides, right? They've had an opportunity to take some looks. Second consecutive draw, and that was a quick one by Adamson. Syracuse spent a lot of time at practice yesterday working on those draws, and it worked in that particular situation. Emma Tyrell here. Adamson has really flourished in this yep. role as a draw taker. She's learning under one of the greatest draw takers in the game in Kayla Trainer and Kenzie Kent, who played on the circle in her time. But she has really come into her own there. She's been so skilled. You see on that last draw control, she's directing it, but she's keeping it close. close. That'll be key for this Syracuse draw team to string together a few draw wins. Savannah Schweitzer to Megan Tyrell, a little bit off but Emma Ward picks it up. 45 on the shot clock. Good save there by Adamson. Megan's got a little bit of room here, gets undercut, flag is up. Wow, that was a shot to the neck. And a card will be distributed. Six blue, dangerous check. Check to the left. One second. Cross check to that neck area. That'll be a card every time. We'll get a look here at this woman up unit for this Syracuse offense. Should be exciting with the variety of threats that they have on this end of the field. Nicole Marshall will sit it out off of the free position. Savannah Schweitzer calling it out from up top. In watching the Orange practice yesterday, Charlotte, you get, you get the feel that they just know where the other one's going all the time at six cents. Here's the cutter, Adamson up top, draws that shooting space, violation. Cat Buchanan staring Adamson down. <laughs> Buchanan with a hot start. You play off your goalkeeper sometime. Let's see what happens here for the Dukes. This is their second opportunity, but they're gonna face a little adversity here on the clear. And that was the look Syracuse wanted. They drew those cutters in the top of the zone, deep into the eight meter, and they had that skip pass up top for that shooting space look. That's what they drew up. Gotta take an extra second to bury on those eight meter opportunities, especially with a great goalkeeper in Buchanan. Extremely agile and showed it on that play. Here's Jankowski up top now.
Maddie Epke, who has risen into being the quarterback of this attack. Went through a stretch this season of only two goals in 10 games, but during that stretch, guess what? She had 14 assists, holding the ball there. Jankowski. Boswell trying to find a little bit of a space. And they get the call. Boswell right into Schweitzer. Schweitzer's great at reading those high shots. You gotta use deception when you're playing against a tall, strong goalkeeper like Schweitzer. You gotta move her off her mark. Use your shoulders, use your eyes or your head to deceive where you're going if you wanna bury that ball high. Great save there by Schweitzer. Takes up a lot of space, as you said, as well. Uh, and, and really, not only height-wise, but girth. It, girth certainly as well. Emma Ward up top now, trying to make the turn inside. Savannah saw Carney for a flash. Ward tries to draw it, doesn't happen. Smith loses it. Adamson scoops it up. And a foul on the play on the follow through. And a yellow card distributed as Smith will leave the field. And it will actually be on Adamson. Great ground ball there. I think her follow through. I don't know about that one. On the replay, it looked like a little different when the it stick didn't come through and actually make contact there, but dangerous follow through is called. Two minute releasable penalty for Adamson. Peterson's whooping in, she lets it rip. Foul though, and a charge going the other way, they wave it off. Wow, she was so wide open, Charlotte. That's the man up look that they want. Peterson actually cutting with her right hand down the middle. They let the ball do the work. She knows exactly when to cut, but a charge call there. Syracuse just settling right now, being a player down. 45 on the shot clock. Charlotte, what are they doing differently inside? I know this is a little bit different situation, obviously, for Syracuse on this run inside the attack. But um, what, what's James Madison doing to try to create some problems inside the eight? Their defense has been their identity for a few years now, and it's a really interesting zone. It's a little bit of the hybrid. Up top, they're reluctant to pass off cutters like a typical zone would. They stay on a little longer, depending on personnel, and it almost looks like a man-to-man. -man. Megan Tyrell is stuffed. Buchanan with the save, her third. Well, 
while Syracuse has gotten some shots off, some decent looks, they have gone almost five minutes now without a goal after putting up 25 against Johns Hopkins last week. They're getting the looks. They just got to be more patient. A quick stick finish inside is not going to get past Buchanan. You've got to throw a fake, whether it's a stick fake or a head fake. you got to move her off the mark. She's a solid lefty goalie. Going the opposite way to Syracuse. Turnover for the Dukes. Little follow through problem. But when everybody's in your face with a stick, things happen, don't they? Second one of the game. The Syracuse transition game has been fun to watch yeah. all year. They got it back going in that game against Hopkins in the second round. And Delaney Schweitzer has been a catalyst for this transition offense. They like to move at pace. They like to push the ball down the middle of the field, especially with those strong midfielders that are so fast in Nat Smith, Sierra Cockrell, and a number of other middies who will push the pace of the game. Swites are hanging around midfield right now, trying to see what's gonna happen here. Her sister Savannah with the ball, gives it up to Smith. Adamson now. Emma Ward dumps it off to Schweitzer, foul down low, and a push. A little cross-check action. Boy, if you're coming through anywhere between the crease and the eight, you better get ready to be rocked. Little jump, little too quick. We'll do it all over again. Everybody's adrenaline's pumping right now, I'm trying to anticipate that whistle. Spot at championship weekend is on the line. <laughs> so be a physical matchup, but the refs have done a great job setting the tone early. Setting it up for Emma Ward, and she just goes wide. It was right there. Ward trying to sneak in off the post. Smith. Trying to slice through the double team. Getting ridden off the play. Back up top to Carney. And the turnover. There's that pressure. Wow. That JMU zone, they want to disrupt these attackers. They want to get on their hands and make those feeds incredibly difficult. And they have thus far another empty opportunity for the Orange. Marchetti with the ball, the lone goal of the game. A little fake. And the loose ball is picked up by Schweitzer. Nice job defensively by Syracuse. head coach Shelly plays for JMU yesterday. One of their keys and goals of this matchup is to slow down Syracuse in transition, and that comes with being aggressive on the ride. It starts with your attackers and your midfielders locking off right away, but if they're able to stop their run and gun type of play in the midfield, I think they'll be able to string some nice possessions together. Absolutely. Good check. Boy, they are putting numbers around the ball, the Dukes are. Durkin. This is a very uncharacteristic first quarter thus far by Syracuse. Past three minutes, three consecutive turnovers. However, their defense has stood tall. Only one goal on the board. 
by the Dukes, and that was in their first possession. Quick movement, Boswell has it knocked away. Some space to run. They've got numbers ahead. Here they come. Cockrell to Ward. Changes hands, would you have changes hands? And it goes wide, over the top for Emma Ward. That's the game they want to get going. Sierra yeah. Cockrell ahead of everyone. Oh, Adamson rings it! Ring that bell and we're tied at one! What a shot by Olivia Adamson. Syracuse, they've answered, but JMU standing tall. We got a tie game with a spot to championship weekend on the line. It's a brand new game with under two minutes to go here in the first. James Madison and Syracuse knotted up at one. Well, you have to go back to 2010. And in talking to the players, they were about 10 years old the last time these two teams met. Look at that score, seven to three, Charlotte. Low scoring game pre-shot clock era. And we've got another defensive battle coming here in the dome today. Cap Buchanan has been on fire. Three <laughs> incredible saves right off the bat. She came prepared for these Syracuse shooters. She's lefty, and she's so quick. She explodes to the ball. These Syracuse attackers are going to have to use a little more patience and a little more deception if they're going to want to get past her today. What great hand-eye coordination. So agile as you see the scoring defense and the scoring offense. Tops in the country, so both ends of the ball. That 7-3 score would be a first quarter score nowadays how the game has changed so much. All right, I'm on the attack for Syracuse, Charlotte. A am I frustrated? Is this just part of the fun chess match of the game you know, that you're playing right now to figure out how to get it over that line? They're getting the looks they want. They're beating these JMU defenders off the dodge, even though they're in a zone and they're drawing the eyes, making them collapse so that the backside is open for them to attack. And they're getting into the middle. It's gonna come down to patience and their efficiency when they shoot. They've gotta take an extra step and an extra second to finish it. We saw in that ACC semifinal game that they lost to North Carolina, they were struggling shooting on the day. Smith to Addison over the top. She's got two, Cuse has two and they take the 2-1 lead. That is the combo they want. Hard dodges from up top, and everybody else is doing their job off ball. Nat Smith, incredible dodger in the midfield, and Adamson sees the defense turn their eyes, and she knows right where to go. 
great finish right on the doorstep. Little change up out of the timeout. Syracuse hadn't scored in 13 minutes of play. And now two goals in 62 seconds. 27 for Adamson. Well, they've got nine different players in double figures. Awfully difficult is Kayla Trainer, one of the best to ever put on a uniform here. And also for our country, the head coach of Syracuse. And Adamson doing it not only with the goal scoring, but in the draw circle. Now 4-0 are the orange with some pressure. She's got control of that ball at the circle. You can see she's getting it where she wants it over that right shoulder of hers. JMU putting Maddie Epke at the draw. They also have Peterson who takes draws and, and, and they're a duo that's become more of a draw specialist tandem this season. But they're throwing everything they can at Adamson who is really controlling that spot on the field right now. Shot clock is off with 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Ward. Oh, Carney, she catches it. Nothing there. Seven seconds. Trying to work quickly. Trying to find Tyrell, loose ball, and that'll do it. For our first quarter of play. Hold on to your seats. Four games on the docket. What a wild start here in Syracuse. The Orange. The two seed with a 2-1 lead after one quarter of play. Two one, Syracuse number two seed as we get set to go in the second quarter of play. Full day of women's lacrosse action for you here on ESPNU. The winner of this game will take on Boston College and Notre Dame ACC rivals. Boston College has had Notre Dame's number two games this season. That should be very interesting. But what else kind of stands out for you there on the day? So many amazing matchups all day long here on ESPNU. But I think to me what stands out is that North Carolina Denver game. That matchup will be so fun to watch. Denver, their defense has been suffocating all year yes. long. They are high up there in scoring defense in the country. And UNC, they are a young team. They're not as experienced, but they showed up in that ACC tournament. And I'm excited to see how they're going to counter that Denver zone defense today on the offensive end. Well, De and Denver, the only undefeated team in the country, kind of mirroring the image that UNC had at 22-0 a year ago. And uh, for the Pioneers, as you mentioned, that scoring defense only allowing six goals per game. So that's going to be a very interesting matchup. But back to action here. Second quarter of play. A little bit of a change 
in the draw circle is Maddie Epke going in. But Q's still dominating on the draw. That's their fifth. check inside as a yellow card is distributed. Another check to the head call, two minute releasable penalty. Emma Chirel so lethal in getting to the middle of the field, but right there you see they make contact with her head and she'll be awarded a free position. position. Redshirt senior Lizzie Fox, captain of the squad, will sit it out. Buchanan once again. Steering down the free position for Syracuse. Oh, great job up over the top. Two sticks involved to break up that play. JMU ball, they were closest to the backup when the ball went out. That's a hustle play, and that can be a spark for this team to get going in transition. Shelly Clays talked to us uh, about that yesterday. Great opportunity to sit down with, with both teams and their coaches. Players were talking to us about some of their keys, and Coach Clays adding in just a few more. Changing their focus was certainly one of them. Let's see what the Dukes can do here. Started out the first possession of the game, if you joined us late, coming down the field off of a great save and scoring on their first opportunity by Marchetti. Let's see if they can change the focus here. Dukes haven't had a solid possession in a while, they want to tire this defense out, right? This zone flies out at you. Freshman Superior Clark, who is one of two freshmen who has played every single game this season, number 30 in white for the orange, matched up against the Tawaritan finalists. They won't have time to kill this player up opportunity. They are a man down on offense, so they're gonna have to go here. They gotta spread out this defense. A little bit of an overload. Here's Peterson, the quick release. Ricochets out, goodness, that looked good. But certainly the way that it kicked off, definitely didn't go all the way in. Wow. Just as stellar as James Madison's defense has been, JMU's first shot there in 12 minutes at the opposite end by Syracuse's defense. Three second call. Three second Savannah Schweitzer with the ball. To Carney, who has to make an adjustment to gather that one in, so she'll bring it back out. Ward. Some of the passing today has been a little bit off by Syracuse, and that adjustment has created their fifth turnover. You gotta connect on those perimeter passes. You gotta spread out a little more, give your teammates the gap to step into to be able to catch a good perimeter pass or a feed inside. Uncharacteristic though, this is one of the, the most high stick work level offenses. And you see their ability to pass and their ability to assist goals to the inside. So very uncharacteristic right there. 
but credit to that JMU zone. They're applying pressure and forcing errors. Still plenty of time here. Jankowski up top. Fox directing it back to Jankowski. Syracuse just packing it in. Marchetti gets the foul call. The only goal of the game. Tough angle, so they'll bring it back up top. Peterson locked off. Fox looking for a cutter. Jankowski working those hands. Good hustle. Epke, a little bit too much of a push. Maddie Epke has a little hockey blood in her, made it come out on that play there. Here's Schweitzer. This is that ride they want to get going. They want to take time off the shot clock and slow the Syracuse offense down in transition. Foul there by Epke. Good job by Emma Tyrell to keep running. Carney's calling for it. And Durkin showing why she's a three-time captain anchoring that defense. Duke's trying to get something going quickly in transition. They have gone scoreless here, Charlotte, for almost 17 minutes. I'd like to see them slow it down in this possession. A little bit of back and forth. But again, the way to wear down this defense is with that ball movement and the rotation off ball, but being patient. You've got to wear them down into the 30, 25 area of the shot clock. Picked off. Schweitzer got a little bit of a handle on it. Tess Query was there. Sidewinder rips it home. 3-1, Orange. What a move by Cockerell. She is one of my favorite midfield Dodgers to watch. She has a powerful shot on the run. She can shoot overhand. She can shoot sidearm but she has a cannon, and what a stop by the Cuse defense here. Delaney Schweitzer's active in the crease, especially when that ball is behind. But the way to beat a zone is to push the pace. Don't let them get set up. And look at the cannon that Sierra Cockerell has. The slide doesn't come, and she knows right where to fire that on the run. The outstretched Sierra slams it down with authority. 27th of the season. And now they put Peterson back in for the draw against Olivia Adamson. And the dominance in the circle continues. Oh, look out, turnover. Boswell. Let's see if the Dukes can use this to their advantage. That miscue is giving them a bonus possession right here. They've got to capitalize. Adamson is really controlling that center right now. So if they're able to capitalize on this turnover, this will be huge for the Dukes.
Jankowski, tie nothing there. She's gonna pull it back out. Peterson trying to get that extra angle, a little kick save by Delaney Schweitzer. Second save of the game, look out! Plenty of room to run! Carney's there! Oh, goodness, bodies flying everywhere! Wow! Baxter, another one of those incredible midfielders on this team who will push the pace. Little push in the back there. <laughs> Carney got rocked. Baxter's flying in one direction. Carney the opposite. All right, they give it to Maddie Baxter. Broken up. Jamie defense got a piece of that shot. Totally. When an attacker elects to step up and shoot from the outside, as a defender on that stick side hash, you want to try and get a piece of it, and they did there. Emma Ward had a flash of a second open. <laughs> Baxter with the size advantage. Cockrell. Baxter goes low and bounces it home. No goal, no goal. Charging will go the opposite way. Wow. Baxter sees the gap. Let's go of it a little too late. I don't know if those feet were set, but charge call. Jam you ball. Eighth turnover for Syracuse. Back to back opportunities for the Dukes to see if they could take advantage of the turnovers. They were not able to last time. At JMU zone, they're doing a great job of making it look open. They make those gaps on the backside appear open to this offense and they collapse in the right way at the right time. That is why they're a veteran-led defense, they communicate well, and they slide on a string. Marchetti trying to work with a, a little bit more quickness to the pace. Up top. Syracuse sealing off and forcing some low percentage areas. 10 seconds. Peterson. All breaking down on the Dukes. And with four seconds, Peterson gets the call. She'll set herself up. there as it went over the goal line and it's back to a one-point game great shot there by Peterson showing why she has one of the best shots in the game so efficient and she's the spark they need to come back in this game
you so much, Isabel Peterson, the American attacker of the year. And with that goal, setting yet another record at James Madison University with points this season, 113. Just that, that's like, that, those numbers like are a whole squad's numbers, not one player's numbers. Just incredible. Peterson has had a season to remember, showing why she's a Tour Town finalist. She has been one of the best goal scorers all year, and you saw that in that game against Maryland in that second round, that come from behind win where she had seven goals to assist. But most importantly, seven for shooting in that game? That's ridiculous. Big goal here by Peterson for the Dukes, and another draw win. They needed that. Peterson with that draw stick, and she stays on the field, Charlotte. You were amazed to see that she wasn't changing sticks. What's the difference, especially for our viewers at home, between the, the draw stick and the stick she would use on the attack? It's incredible. Actually, Isabella Peterson and Maddie Epke both play with the draw head as attackers, and they have worked on this since January, talking to their offensive coordinator, Colleen Shearer. They've been working on their stick work with these draw heads so that they are threats in transition right from the circle. And you've seen Peterson all season pour in a number of goals right off the draw. She's just too much of a threat to change sticks. And why do you need to change a stick? But what a big momentum switch right now. After Syracuse's goal was nullified at the opposite end, it's been James Madison twice now with goals in 55 seconds of play to tie this one up. Just a miscommunication in the defense right there. A dot play, man up opportunity with the defender behind her. Lefty Caitlin Morgan sees the miscue and says, hey, you gotta honor me on this side, buries that high on Schweitzer. 21st of the season for Morgan. After JMAU was held scoreless for 23 minutes. Look at those sticks. Maddie Epke, number 20 for the Dukes. She plays with this draw head. Not only does she win draw controls, but that is her attacking head of choice down at X. So impressive, both her and Peterson. The sidewall, the sidewall is so sturdy on this draw head. That's what makes it so effective at the center. But she has the ability to use that stick throughout the entirety of the game. Adamson picks up an ever so important draw for Syracuse, trying to stifle this run by the Dukes. Emma Tyrell to Baxter who will back it out. How quickly does that draw head break down during a typical season when you're taking so many draws? Where, you know, what, what's it gonna do differently on the whip on, on your follow through when you try to take a shot? Well, the draw head is incredible. It's been an amazing, evolving facet of the game. And it's one of the sturdiest heads. So it's ready for the pressure at the draw control center. But their ability to get comfortable and, and develop their stick work with that head it's a challenging task, but Colleen Shear was so impressed by their willingness to put this to the test and to be able to use that draw head as attackers. And it's working for them, not only in the circle, but also on the offensive end. Cockroll lets it go up high. No change in direction there, and an easy save for Buchanan. Here's Durkin, a little more room to run. Marchetti gets it over the line. Shot on the run by Cockerell. Stopped by Buchanan. And the Dukes want to talk this one over. An opportunity for JMU to take their first lead since that first goal by Marchetti to start the match. Shelly Clays wants to set this one up. The bracket today, the winner of this game will take on Boston College and Notre Dame. Coming your way at 2.30, you get a little bit of a break. At five o'clock, undefeated Denver heads to Chapel Hill.
to take on North Carolina. That is the matchup to watch. They all are, but that one has my eye because this Denver team is undefeated. And they're coming in to Chapel Hill trying to take off the Tar Heels. But the Tar Heels are coming into their own. They're playing well right now, led by a few freshmen who are stars in Caroline Godine and Marissa White. But I'm excited to see that matchup later today, as well as the other two quarterfinal matchups. What a day for women's lacrosse. Absolutely. Izzy Skane in the Skane train, the top seed. Northwestern will take on Loyola. Loyola just wrapping up their ninth Patriot League title after winning 75 consecutive regular season Patriot League games. Quite a run by the Greyhounds. This game is filled with incredible offensive players and all day long actually filled with an incredible offensive player. How lucky are we? We get to watch all four 100 plus point scorers this season today. And we've got two in this matchup right now. And Megan Tyrell and Isabella Peterson. Two different styles of players, but so dynamic. And there you see Megan Tyrell. She leads all time in points at Syracuse University, which in and of itself is an incredible accomplishment. You want calmness on the field. You want number 18 on the field with you. Megan Tyrell, uh, I kept saying to her yesterday, are you, like, are you all right? She's like, yeah, you know, like she's the, the cool cat of the bunch, just really calming. And that's just Megan Tyrell's demeanor. But let's see, out of the timeout, what Shelly Clays has drawn up here, 47 seconds on the shot clock for the Dukes. Under two minutes to go. Peterson. 30 seconds now on the shot clock. Maggie Clark getting run off. Peterson tries to step back. Looked like she was trying to create just a little space, maybe draw a shooting space violation. Two seconds. And the defense holds. Wow. That pressure is hard to go up against in the Syracuse zone. And you see they're working all four quarters of the offense as the JMU attackers are trying to beat them off the dodge, draw the eyes of the defense, and then find that gap. But you've got to be patient and you've got to be spaced out. They're cutting all at once into that eight meter. They're getting too far in. That leaves you no lanes, no lanes to cut off ball. So they've got to stay spaced out while they're continuing to attack hard. The crowd trying to spur on the JMU defense. Ward up top, 35 seconds to go. Smith with the shot clock off here. Adamson, she's got the hat trick. And Cuse with the lead. There's the dual threat quarterback. She steps up in a lane. Megan Tyrell, number 18, thinking that's shooting space. She pumps a little hesitation, gets the defense to freeze. On this left elbow, they're flying at her. And if you think she doesn't see where her teammates are two steps ahead of the play, they're going to cash in on that all day long. Great yep. finish by Adamson. Even better feed on that lefty wing by Megan Tyrell. With that, stopping an eight minute drought offensively. 28th of the day for Olivia Adamson. Where she has contributed to Syracuse winning seven draws on the afternoon. Peterson back in the circle. Second consecutive time for JMU. 24 seconds, plenty of time for one of these teams to go down the field and an opportunity to score. Cockrell. 
Oh, a little too aggressive. They're gonna call it a check or a slash. What a break because Sierra was running full steam ahead. Interesting choice by JMU. When the draw is set up, they've elected to go man up on the defensive side of the restraining line so that they are able, if Syracuse is able to win the draw, they're able to stop that transition man up opportunity there. As it was slowed down, you could certainly see that Durkin got a stick in there. Cockrell over the top. And Syracuse with a two goal advantage. Look at the way Cockrell drives in towards that left side, that left height, so that she's able to increase her angle as a shooter on the eight meter. Because she explodes to the left side, she's able to get her hands free away from the stick side defender and bury that on Buchanan. Incredible execution on a very difficult hash on the eight meter as a righty shooter. Sierra Cockrell's second of the game, second goal in 15 seconds for Syracuse. And she has to be absolutely thrilled right now. Sierra Cockrell, a young lady in 2022, only played one game before an injury. She's back, she's strong, she's an honorable mention, All-American today by inside lacrosse. Those are the little things that you just never forget through your career. First two quarters in the books. Today's winner will move on to the final four. Syracuse with a two goal lead. We head to break. Syracuse and JMU, Rachel and Kelsey on the flip side with all the highlights at the half.
Welcome back to the Dome in Syracuse, New York. Leah Secondo, Charlotte North with you. We are getting set to start the third quarter of play. But before we do that, we have to look back here on our first two quarters. Syracuse up five to three. And, and Charlotte, JMU's defense really putting the thumb down and quieting Syracuse early on. They came ready to play. They're making aggressive plays on this Syracuse offense. They're getting out to hands. They're causing disruption on the perimeter and making these feeds difficult. But Olivia Adamson, she's found gaps. She's got three goals in this first half, and she's found a way to score. This JMU defense scouted those four. That big four has been scouted. They're getting out to the hands and pressuring them. But Olivia Adamson said, hey, you don't want to scout me. I'll find gaps off ball, and I'll bury that ball in the back of the net. And Adamson's numbers, as you see what the big four have done all season long, three players with 50 plus goals, nine goal, nine players total in double figures for Syracuse. Tyrell with two on the day. It's the little things, right? You can't go one way, you gotta help out the other way. Totally, and again, you see Megan Tyrell with those two assists, but that big four, they had a hard time getting open and getting touches in that first half. So for Syracuse, I think they're gonna need to get get them going on the offensive end. And with that, uh, JMU starts Maddie Epke in the circle against Adamson, who has won six draws on the day. And the Dukes come out of it with the ball, going nose to goal. Superior Clark coming out of the crowd with it. Ball really got lost there. And it was interesting, Delaney Schweitzer was there, but she kind of backed herself out so that everyone else could see the play. Tough break there for the Dukes. You come out of the half, you win a draw control, a spot where you need to improve in the second half and then turn that ball over. You gotta limit that. You gotta take those possessions that you get and value them. All right, the ball. So, so now, Put back on your heels defensively. You're gonna need your defense to kind of spark your offense. And if you're Syracuse, goodness, a big goal coming out of the block here. Could really set the tone for the third quarter. Maddie Baxter! She got rocked and knocked inside the eight. Held on to that ball for the goal. Maddie Baxter, another great dodger from up top. She goes right to right, and she wills her way to Cage. She sees, they know they're staying with Adamson there off ball, and they don't come guard her once she beats one. They're late to come, she goes through that double team, protects that stick, and that's a hard shot to track if you're Buchanan. Maddie Baxter's tall, and when she goes high to low there, it's tough for Buchanan to get down on that shot. Quite a season, Maddie Baxter is putting together here a career high in points and goals. Her first of the day, this is a 3-0 run now by Kayla Trainer's Syracuse team, and that's over the last minute 25. Two alternating possessions will go back to Syracuse as it was hit to the head. Biggest lead for Syracuse right now. Syracuse has come out in this short time here of this third quarter and paying a little bit more rhythm to the pace and authority. It's a great ball movement there. Textbook working one quarter of the zone, draw them over, two passes out of it. Is that recovering backside defense? Great shooting space look. Cockerell is stuffed, tries to knock it away. Fifth save. All right, if you're JMU here, you need this. You've got to string together some plays. Buchanan has come up clutch for you. 
You've got to value this possession. Chekowski has it knocked away. After the check, it goes back to Ty. That double team, anywhere, as soon as that ball is received, double team is there. Foul on the play. That high pressure zone, they collapse well. They pressure out beyond the 12, but they can collapse into that eight meter right away. A hold call there gives them another chance. Oh, uh, Manila tried to outlet at the turnover. Here they come, transition. <laughs> Cockrell to Ward. Baxter and denied. Sixth time this game. Maddie Baxter slamming her hand down to the turf. Would like to have that one back. Nice job by Kat. It's tough to beat Buchanan today, especially high to high. You've seen Buchanan come up with those stops on Cockerell a couple times there on Baxter. Got to change up levels on your shots. You're facing a very talented goalie. Similar to that Baxter goal we saw a few minutes ago, you gotta change levels. Turnover. Crowd to its feet, trying to spur the home team. That is such good on-ball pressure right there. And you see the rest of the defense is doing their job. They're clogging the middle and making those gaps look impossible to find. And that is textbook crease on-ball pressure right there. Tess Query has come up with two big turnovers at key times in this game thus far. Hey, Carney trying to scoop it up. Back to JMU. Trying to find Buchanan on the bounce. Look out! Adamson with it. Emma Ward! A loose ball in front, and Ward from Adamson. Balls on the ground. You're fighting for a spot in championship weekend. You're going after those 50-50 balls as hard as you can. And this JMU defense, they'll, they'll attack you in that area, but credit to Syracuse right here. They pick it up, immediate heads up play by Adamson again and Emma Ward. You see her at X a lot as that yep. dynamic feeder, but she has an outside cannon just like Carney. Absolutely. And we've seen it this year. She cashes in there with a step down. Wow. Sidearm. Top left. Well, when you slow it down that much, you, you see the work that everybody put in. Buchanan's trying to come over. She sees the white jerseys around her. Megan Tyrell's trying to keep it alive. And Emma Ward, what a great story on her 35th. Uh, a player, too, that was injured during her career, kind of had to change her game a little bit. I love the evolution of Emma Ward. Yep. She has been a great goal scorer her, scorer her whole career. This year, her vision, her passing, and her facilitating has elevated her play to a whole new level. But don't forget about her shooting ability. She can beat you off the dodge, and she can rip one from the outside. 
Is that one of the hardest things? For sure. I think it's developed on the women's side a lot in the past few years. Got a check to the head. Two minute releasable penalty. Lee Boswell will have a seat not coming at the best time at all with this 4 0 run by Syracuse. Tough ask of your defense right here. Player down to come up with a stop. You want to halt this Syracuse run, but it's going to be hard when their player up. And this offense has been incredible in this situation. Getting the looks that they want. We'll see if they can cash in on it here. Here comes the weave a little bit. They show it just, just a little bit. Well, foul was up, and somehow Megan Tyrell held on to that ball. Her teammate's going over to her now. Hard coming out. Yep. Another check to the head. Tyrell, number 14. Durkin with a hard check. Ooh, goodness. Goes for that interception. Comes down on the head of Tyrell. Yeah, and, and somehow, with the athleticism, obviously, at this level. And that's the fourth yellow card today. My goodness. So a difficult situation for JMU. Two players up now. Charlotte, with that fourth yellow card, the momentum quickly moving on this 4-0 run. Just a little bit more of that hole getting a, a bit deeper here for the Dukes. Not that they haven't been in adverse situations. It can be frustrating for a defense. When the team's going on a run, you've got to stay disciplined. You've got to stay mentally locked in. You can't have turnovers and you can't have errors that result in player off opportunities to continue their run. So for this JMU defense, they got to dig deep. And they got to refocus. Tyrell's open. Flashes back out. Adamson is also open now. Good defense by JMU. They come away with it. Collective team effort. That is a hard stop to make in a 7v5 situation. You got to clog the middle as much as you can when you're two players down, but you got to avoid three seconds. So they're moving in and out of the eight meter, but that was a great collapse. Still two players down. See if they can kill it here. Now back to just one player down. Fox back out on the field. She's up top. JMU has scored player down once in this game. They're going to need to do it again. All right, we're back at even strength. Frustration from both sides. 
And that will lead us to a timeout for JMU. Third quarter action. The road to the final four on the line. Seven three Syracuse on the timeout by James Madison. Six thirty four to go here in the third quarter of play. Leah Sacondo and Charlotte North with you from the dome this afternoon as we kick off our ten hours of lacrosse coverage on ESPNU. And it was three three when the floodgates on the attack that potent attack opened up for Syracuse. Syracuse has brought the momentum from the end of that second quarter into this third. And they found a way to find the openings in this JMU zone defense. And they're starting to finish on their shots. They're capitalizing on JMU turnovers on their offensive end that their defense is coming up with. And they're finding a way to stay patient and pick the right opportunities and then bury their shots. Emma Ward, first in the ACC and third in the nation in assists. We're getting into the scoring column there. JMU has been held scoreless almost 12 and a half minutes with five turnovers. Getting this ball back on the right, I love that timeout by the coaching staff of JMU. Regroup, draw up the look you want, but stay patient and don't settle for anything that might be a 50% look in the middle. Schweitzer, ball's hanging there, she scoops it up. Keep in mind that JMU was two players down for a good portion of that 12 and a half minutes. Tripping call there. Well, Syracuse transitioned in. Better ball movement, they try to go low. This is the spacing yeah. you want if you're JMU on offense. You've gotta stay beyond the 12, expand the perimeter. Not sure, the... Screaming out the offensive play there. Fox is checked. 39 seconds on the shot clock. Foul called. Outside. 
Isabel Peterson with the much needed goal. And that is her money spot. Right there on the lefty elbow. She knows when the defense is recovering and when it's her turn to go off the dodge. She sees the defense rotate. She's able to tuck and go underneath that recovering defender. She wants to get to the middle, and if this offense wants to get going, she'll be a reason why. Peterson with both goals on the day. One from free position, and this one now to key juncture of this game. Could we be revisiting something that happened a week ago? Never count this team out. We saw it last week. Peterson put on an all-time performance against Maryland in the second round. Seven goals, four of them in the fourth quarter when her team needed it, coming from behind. Look to her to be a spark for them. First goal in a little over 14 minutes for the Dukes. Eleven three, the advantage in the draw circle for Syracuse. Baxter has some room. Flips it to Tyrell. this offense rotates off ball. They get in and out of the eight meter. They're not utilized, they're right back out. And they're cycling above the 12. Oh! The <laughs> little, little action there by Megan Tyrell. Charlotte does expect the unexpected, right, shot-wise. What we just saw with Megan Tyrell, something that you, you were obviously very good at too. Those things you can't always work on in practice. Reset the shot clock to 43. But unable to unable to really kind of work on that kind of a, a shot. You have to do that away, right? But Carney knows how to do that and put it away. Carney's first goal of the game. That creativity is something that head coach Kayla Trainer was incredible at and teaches here at Syracuse. And they all have the ability on this offensive end, players like Tyrell, Carney, Ward, to go behind the back around the world, change levels on their shots. It's what makes them so dynamic. And Megan Carney is such a great catch and finish shooter, especially off of feed. We've seen it a number of times this season. But that is that lethal shot she has done so many times this year. And again, the ability for that offense to spread out, open that middle for her to explode to the spot. Catch it with space, turn and fire it how she likes. It's incredible. First goal of the game for Carney, 56th, 56th of the season for the first team all ACC player. 8-4. Syracuse out in front of James Madison. The winner of this game will take on Boston College or Notre Dame. That game is coming up at 2.30 here on the U. And a big victory in the draw circle for the Dukes. Peterson starting to read that a little bit better. Oh! Delaney Schweitzer read that very well. How about that? She acts as that eighth defender down there. She's just as much a part of that outside the crease defense as those crease girls, and she will be active. You've got to make crisp passes to the perimeter. And don't count her out to come up with a clutch cause turnover. Going back to the draw, I love where JMU situated Peterson on the circle. You've got to take away her win. When Adamson's been winning it to her spot over the shoulder, you've got to adjust as a draw unit. And Peterson came up with that one, but they weren't able to capitalize on a goal. Megan Tyrell had to adjust a little bit. 
that forces Syracuse to bring it back out. And the trail's broken up. Buchanan on the play. One area of this game, Kayla Trainer might nitpick would be the passing. Stick to stick passing. I agree, Leon. I'd also go with their quick stick shooting. We've seen it a number of times. Buchanan will read a shot without a fake, a shot with no deception behind it. They're getting looks to the middle, but they've got to move Buchanan off her mark if they want to bury them. Fox has room. Three seconds. Twenty-four to go here in the third quarter. 53 seconds on the shot clock. Off the whistle. Bounces off of his shoulder. <laughs> that was a crazy save. Right back to the Dukes. Schweitzer is standing tall today. She's not biting on any head fakes. She is standing tall. Jankowski goes low. And that's good for the goal. Willing her way in. And this all starts with a save at the other end by Kat Buchanan, who has played phenomenal today. She is giving her offense endless opportunities to go down and score. She's quick and she explodes so well to that ball. But Ty Jankowski, she is such a good righty pocket player. She can draw double teams and beat anyone off the dodge. But look at the way she gets to the inside. That is so hard to do, especially when that defense is in your face. She wills herself, muscles her way underneath that defender to get her that one-on-one -on -one situation on the crease. She buries it. Epke goes back in. Jankowski with her 50 third of the season, the first teamer in the American. There it is again, Peterson reads it, jumps to the spot. First time consecutive draw wins for JMU. Momentum switch. NCAA women's lacrosse coverage continues next weekend for the semifinals. Action begins on Friday the 26th, 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the 2023 Women's Lacrosse Championships, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Seven seconds on that three second call. I think the ref had to flag up as they were continually playing. Foul came a couple seconds before. They're going to discuss it here. Not the best spot with seven seconds on the clock. If I'm JMU, I, I almost don't want to let this quarter to end because you're kind of feeling the momentum shift right now. This hanging hash, tough angle, but you do have the eyes of two defenders. You've got one behind you and one on your stick side. So there is a man up opportunity somewhere. Big save by Schweitzer. That should do it to wrap up this third quarter of play. Syracuse with the 8-5 advantage. One more quarter in the books. Cuse on the run here early. And then JMU a little bit of a run.
to make this one interesting. 8-5 after three quarters. Boston College and Notre Dame coming up at 2.30 here on the U. Third meeting between the Eagles and the Irish. The Irish have it combined with their trio. 273 points, but BC just as strong on offense. The big three for Notre Dame in Madison Ahern, Casey Choma, and Jackie Wolak, they have been tough to stop. But Jen Medjid for this Boston College Eagles squad has been one of the best finishers all year long on the attacking end. I think there's some offensive star power in this game, but in that regular season matchup and that ACC semifinal matchup, it was defensive heavy. That's right, 9-4 as you see some of the players to watch. Dolce, the freshman of the year in the ACC and also the MOP of the ACC championships and another Tawaritan finalist, Jen Medjik. This will be an exciting matchup to watch, an ACC showdown coming up next on ESPNU. Courtney Martinez-Connor and Mark Dixon will have that one for you on the U at 2.30. One quarter of play, the winner will move on to take on the winner of Notre Dame and Boston College. Dukes coming off of a little break here. They've had time to discuss it. And Charlotte, their, their bit of a run after cleaning up some things. They did play shorthand and look out. Opportunity low, Schweitzer with the save. That was obvious. But I also like the preventive officiating here. That card could have possibly been pulled out. Another great collapse by the Syracuse defense. Miscommunication, yep. but Ty Jankowski found the gap. But that communication and that ability to close that space and do it in a way that's legal and it's textbook defense and pressure. That helps Schweitzer come up with that stop. Yeah, and, and JMU, all right, so the run in the beginning of the third quarter, Syracuse puts up four, right? During that time after that, JMU ha puts two players in the box, their fourth yellow, non-releasable. They kind of get out of that. Then they kind of go on a little bit of a run and make this interesting. Amber Ward, Amber Tyrell says, not on my watch. And Emma Tyrell with the goal, her first of the day. 9-5, just when you think the door is opening a little bit for JMU, Q strikes back. This Q's offense has cleaned up their stick work in passing. They've stretched this defense, and there's the vision of Emma Ward. 
Tyrell explodes into that gap. But Emma Ward, she's a righty. She catches this on the left wing. She already scans the middle and knows exactly who's gonna be there. Great catch and finish by Tyrell, but that is, that is the identity of the Syracuse offense this season. Emma Ward, not only a great feeder, but also a good little football player back in her day, too. And kind of running it like a fullback right now. Realizing she's on the big screen and her teammates uh, not letting her forget about that. Just having a little bit of fun there. Those are the fun things too, Charlotte, I'm sure you can appreciate afterwards. When, when you win, not when you lose in the locker room, just really giving it to your teammate just a little bit more. And this Q's team, these graduate students, these seniors, this is their last home game in the Dome. And they wanna get back to championship weekend. Somewhere they weren't last season, but they, they're driven. These leaders know what's at stake. And they want a big win today on their last home game. Buchanan can't stop it, and the engine is running for Syracuse. Double digits for the Orange, 10-5, starting to pull away here in the fourth. It's Adamson off ball again. All the eyes are on the ball carrier and the adjacents to the ball carrier. They don't want to leave Tyrell. One to the right of the ball carrier, Adamson knows exactly where the gap's gonna be. Catches in tight, sees around Buchanan and finishes again today. She's been spectacular in those gaps all game long. Two goals in 42 seconds for the Orange. This is their biggest lead, fourth of the day for Olivia Adamson, a season high. What a game number one is putting together for Syracuse today. So impressed with Adamson at the draw center today. And, and not only her, but the draw unit communicating and working together. It's a part of the game that has evolved over the past few years. This unit has become a game within the game. It's a 3v3 situation. And they're communicating and they're doing exactly what they want. A little too fancy there, turnover with the ball. Let's see if JMU can capitalize here. A much needed goal. Try to spark their momentum. You have to wait for the personnel to come out. As it gets in Lily Boswell's hand. Keep in mind, this was a team that was down twice in the fourth to Maryland, came back to win in the final seconds, 15 to 14, to put them on the stage today. Plenty of time for the Dukes, but they need one here. Boy, you're gonna come down that middle area. You're gonna pay. Mattis taking it there. So a free position opportunity. 11-10 to go in the fourth. Can't find it. Going low. And Mattis trying to spur on her team. She steps up. You see her feet are facing the sidelines. Her shoulder is facing the sidelines. She's not squaring up to that cage like she's gonna run in this eight meter. She has an outside shot and she shows it here. You see the way her body's facing. You can see 
how she's gonna step up and take that shot. A low to low, powerful outside hammer for Mattis. A little skip there, you didn't, you, I didn't realize it when we were going in full time, but as it was slowed down, 10th of the season for Mattis, and it skipped off the surface. Syracuse has won 68% of the draws today, as you mentioned, Charlotte. Epke back to take this one. What is making Olivia Adamson so special right now today in that draw circle? She's doing a great job directing the ball. She's getting under it. Alternating possession there. But even on that one, she got under it and got it where she wanted it, right over that shoulder, which she's been been going to a lot today. So when she gets under, is she trying to get under it with her hands? Is she trying, is it the position of the stick and the hands combined? The draw specialist unit and, and center has become a lot about wrist quickness and, and the ability to jump that whistle and get under it with that top wrist to be able to direct it on the back of your strings from the jump. And I think she's done an amazing job today and, and she's worked so hard on this piece of her game all season long particularly in the later part of the season. Boswell is broken up on the play. The foul is called. And she'll get an opportunity here on the line. 10.22 now to go. pressure by the Syracuse zone. They know that feed. They're looking to Peterson right now. They've got to string together a couple of goals. They elected not to take that eight meter, but to work the possession. And that was a great collapse again, coming up with a big turnover by that zone. Full day of action up ahead for you here on ESPNU. NCAA women's lacrosse coverage will continue next weekend with the semifinals. The action will begin on Friday the 26th. 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU for more information about the 2023 as Meg Carney scores her second of the day. Defense to offense and Cuse with their 11th. But don't forget to visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Megan Carney with a shot on the run. We've seen it a couple times, scored earlier on a similar look. She gets that flip from Adamson. That hesitation by the defender, who's a step behind her when she flies off that flip, she's able to get her hands free and rip. Look at the placement right past Buchanan. That had some speed behind it. And that is the ideal situation for a sharpshooter like Megan Carney, who's given us a show in this second half. 57th of the season for Carney. Another player, Charlotte, I know you've had opportunities to play with her uh, at, at different stages with the national team and along the way, uh, has had her, her trials and tribulations with injuries and being able to refocus, which isn't always easy to do at any level. Megan Carney has been phenomenal her whole career here at Syracuse, and I'm lucky that I have gotten the chance to play with her back in Texas and watch her grow throughout her years here. She has done an incredible job leading this team. She's a captain of two years, and she has brought the energy to this team. And she is a spark on the offensive end. She's that stretch shooter. She brings so much X's and O's wise, but she is such a spark and an energy buzz for this team. Ball will be retained as they recycle the shot clock for JMU. But we are under 10 minutes to go here. Dukes must go to the net a little bit quicker. Peterson with an area and a run, and it's Aaron. But it'll stay with JMU. That's the look you want. That's that gap. The 
Defense is rotating. Peterson slips in with a big lefty target. Two good looks. Under a minute on the shot clock now. Kaitlyn Morgan cannot catch and shoot. Ball goes awry, back to Syracuse. turnover count here. I'm talking to Coach Sally Clays. She knew turnovers were going to be a factor in this game and she says this team, this 2023 Dukes team, they've shaved off five to seven turnovers on average per game compared to years past. She credits their, their stick work and their ability to hone in on their skill sets and cherish the ball, but credit to the defenses in this game because they have forced a number of turnovers. Tyrell with the ball, but we're going to have a whistle first. Savannah Schweitzer was also running on to the play. Clock continues to run. You're Syracuse right here. Now want to slow it down. <laughs> Clock's They've your got, buddy. No. <laughs> They've got a, a, a good shot clock well into this fourth quarter. And you don't want to give this Dukes team a chance to run at the other end and start piling some goals on. Because you know they can back. come from behind. Absolutely, get that confidence back. JMU looking for a big stop here. Emma Ward with a goal on the day. As Carney slides through. Smith. Quick to Ward, tries to draw it. Pass down low, bounces out. Lizzie Fox is okay, up to Durkin. The Dukes with the goal, Matty Epke has worked in the draw circle, has worked for Mix. That's what you need right there. Freshman Matty Epke stepping up in the moment. A trip to championship weekend on the line. We've got Cap Buchanan making plays at one end for this Dukes team. They don't want to go home. What a kick save we see there. But this Dukes team is fighting, and Matty Epke gets them a little bit closer.
11-7, Syracuse with the advantage here. Five away to go in the fourth quarter. You feeling the same little scenario maybe as we had a week ago with Maryland and James Madison? Down by four in the fourth quarter, and what a comeback by the Dukes. This JMU team is not out of this game. They put together an incredible fourth quarter comeback against Maryland. And credit to Maryland, they played an amazing game, but. JMU had the answers on the offensive end, stringing together a run late in the fourth. And they've got to do the same thing here in this situation. They're getting eight meter opportunities by causing chaos in the Syracuse zone. They're getting them to spin and rotate. A couple of three seconds and shooting space calls will award them those eight meter opportunities. But right now, they've got to come up with a draw control, an area that Adamson has dominated today. Adamson has won seven draws. She's had six games this year with 10 plus as Epke, who scored out of the timeout there, or into the timeout. Personnel coming on for Syracuse. Syracuse knows they're patient on this possession. And they get a good look at the end of this shot clock, they'll be in a pretty good situation. Hold call there on the JMU defense will give them an eight meter Sierra Cockerel with a cannon of a shot. Sierra Cockerell off the eight meter to zip that ball to the backside where Megan Tyrell finds Emma Ward one on none on that crease. Some may think Cockerell will take that eight meter opportunity, but she sees a better opportunity if she zips the ball to the outlets on the backside through her leader, Meg Tyrell, who finds that open seam. And Emma Ward cashes in right on the doorstep. How about the big four, the difference, Charlotte, between the first two quarters and the second two quarters of the game? That's Syracuse big four. Megan Tyrell, Megan Carney, Emma Ward, and Emma Tyrell. They are some of the biggest offensive threats this game has. And they're all on one end of the field together, but that JMU zone in the first half. They scouted them well, and they yep. knew how to get pressure on them and disrupt what they're good at. They all have a different style, but they have come to life in the second half. Emma Tyrell looks over to Kayla Trainer quickly as Carney tries to gather it in. She does. She's running out of real estate there.
crowd starting to feel it. Here, damn you, you gotta pressure out. Get to that on-ball pressure. You'll have help if you need it. But you gotta disrupt this offense and come up with some clutch cause turnovers if you're gonna give your chance to stay in this game and let your offense do the work on the other end. time off as you can because you know how lethal they can be in the fourth quarter on that other end in that Duke, Duke's offense. Ward with the flip to Cardi! <laughs> Meg Cardi with the goal! Was she in the crease? No, she was not. It's good. Creativity we talked about earlier. Emma Ward behind the back to a Megan Carney behind the back. That is beautiful. They have the ability to score in so many different ways. Their stick is an extension of their body. Emma Ward sees the pressure of the defense on her front side. She knows the right play is a behind the back pass. Megan Carney having fun with it. Goes behind the back, and Cap Buchanan was not expecting that. Wow. And you have the ability to use your stick off your body like that. <laughs> it just elevates your game. You have the ability to make plays when the defense has that pressure on your front side or on your hands, and you don't have time to switch to your left. Megan Carney and Emma Ward are two incredibly skilled and creative players. And you saw it there. Carney with the hat trick here in the second half. And this is the 10th time this season. Or check that. Carney has had four plus goals nine times this season. As Ward pulls it out. A solid season here for JMU. Let's not take anything away from that as the Syracuse fans stand on their feet. They have had a solid run, the Dukes have this year. It's an incredible accomplishment and so hard to do to get to this stage. As we see a card come out. A little bit of the frustration starting to come through. Ty Jankowski will have a seat on the foul. This JMU team has put together an incredible 2023 campaign. Their first year in the American Athletic Conference went 6-0 and won the regular season. They beat a great Maryland team twice. Once in the regular season and, and once in the NCAA tournament last weekend. They have been incredible and fun to watch all year long. Credit to that coaching staff these talented players out here today. Absolutely, this is their first quarter final appearance in five years, 11th overall of the program. And as Charlotte mentioned, their first run in the American this season. scoops it up and that should do it. Tyrell, look out! Great save by Buchanan, point blank! Rebound is there! <laughs> and we'll 
have a green card on the play. Number 22 for delay of game. Delay of 22. You heard it, Meg Carney will have a seat for the delay of game. Great save here, point blank, like you said on the doorstep by Buchanan. Kat Buchanan came ready to play today. She has made some great stops for this team. That'll do it, Syracuse moves on to the Final Four for the ninth time and the first since 2021. Cuse are back in the Final Four. What a game and performance they put together in all facets of the game. From the draw control, offensively, especially in the second half. And their defense, their stifling zone defense with Delaney Schweitzer in net. Congratulations to the JMU Dukes on an amazing season. And to the Syracuse Orange, who are advancing. Well, our Capital One player of the game could have been a number of players, but the one that stood out just a hair more, it started in the draw circle, Charlotte, Livia Adamson. Her play today, six goals, two assists, or check that, I'm sorry, four goals, two assists, eight draw wins for Syracuse. Adamson was phenomenal today, and it started with the spark she provided at the draw circle. From that first whistle, she was directing the ball. And offensively, she was finding the gaps of that, that zone defense when all the eyes were on that big four and they were drawing maybe one, two, three players in that zone. She knew exactly what seemed to slip into and she buried her opportunities when they came. The Orange, the seniors, leaving the Dome with a victory. They head to North Carolina to the Final Four. We send it now to our studio, Rachel DiCecco and Kelsey Riggs.